So far we've been working with one dialog. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to work with multiple dialogs. To start off, we're just going to make a simple example. Make sure your base class is QDialog. Hit next. And we have a basic project that we've been working with pretty much since the very beginning of this. Let's go ahead and scale this off. And let's grab a couple push buttons here. And we're going to say with parent and without parent. So what we're going to do is we are going to make another dialog and we're going to pop that dialog open one with a parent and one without a parent. Because remember the way Q handles memory management is you have a parent child hierarchy. So we're just going to say button with parent and let's make this without parent. That way it's pretty obvious what's going on here. Go to slot and let's go to slot on this one too. Save and run. And absolutely nothing's going to happen because we haven't written any code, but this is the bare basics of what's going to happen. We're going to click a button and we're going to open another dialog. Same thing's going to happen with each button, but there's a profound and subtle difference. One's going to have a parent, one's not. And I want to show, really demonstrate how that impacts your application. So let's right click, let's go to add new. Now you notice how if you're in C++, you'll have class, source, header. If you go to Qt, this is where things get a little bit interesting. You can have an item model, which is your model view architecture. You can have a Qt designer form class or just a designer form. The difference here is a little challenging to wrap your head around. If you do just the form, it's just that, just the form. But if you have a form class, you can actually build the UI and have the classes behind it. You already have it here. You have dialog plus your header and your implementation file. So let's cancel that. Let's go through that one more time. So you're going to go new, cute, designer form class. If you do just designer form, it's just going to make this dialog with no class behind it. You have some options. You can make it with buttons on the bottom and it gives you a graphical representation. Buttons on the right, without buttons, main widget, or I'm sorry, main window, which we don't want yet, and widget, which is just, well, the bare basics of everything. So we're going to do a dialog without buttons. Click next. And you can see how it wants to say, hey, what do you want to call this? Well, we already have a dialog H, so we're going to call this dialog 2. We're going to make a header file, implementation file, and a UI. If you don't see these three boxes, you're going to have a bad time because we're not creating everything that we need in the background. And here is our other file, or I should say our other dialog. I'm just going to wire this thing up. And let's put a label in here. And let's go ahead and right click. Let's go to slot. And we're just going to accept that and close it. Notice how now we have dialog, dialog two, dialog, dialog two, and we have our two user interfaces. Seems a little bit confusing the way this works, but it kind of makes sense once you really start digging into it. I'm just going to close all these little files here so you can Double click, go into that, go back and edit, double click, go into this, and you can see they're distinctly different. All right, let's go back into here and let's go to slot. So we've got our with parent and without parent. Let's jump into our header here. What we need to do because we're going to work with another file is you guessed it, we have to include it. We're going to include dialog two. Now we have pretty much everything we need to work with this dialog. Let's jump into here. And we've got with parent and without parent. So let's go ahead and say 
dialog two. And we're going to make this with a parent. And we're just going to say dialog show. And through the magic of copy and paste, we're going to do the same thing here. But we're going to get rid of this. And we're going to say null pointer. And without parent. Let's see what the fundamental difference here is. Let's go ahead and run this with parent. Ta-da, here's our other dialog. Now, if we click close, it doesn't close the whole application. It only closes this dialog. See? And we can click this any number of times that we want. We're going to show you how to limit this to just one here in a second, but I just want to outline that you, know, you really can just have a whole ton of these windows. There are applications where you'd want to do something like that. And each one is a self-contained dialog. Without parent, pretty much same functionality. So what's the fundamental difference here? With parent, if I go ahead and close this parent, you see the entire application closes. Without parent, let's do that again. And let's just have two windows here. And let's close this main window. Both of these are without parent. Notice how our application is still running and our dialogues are still here. We open this guy first. Let's close him. No, nope, it's still running. So what's happening under the hood here, you can see how this little guy is running. And let's go and head force quit him. We could have just closed the dialogue. But what's really happening under the hood is our main statement. We're saying Q application A, and then we're making a dialogue show, and then we're going to A exec. So what's happening under the hood here is we're smart enough to know, or I should say cute smart enough to know, we've opened other dialogues. So this A exec is just going to loop indefinitely until all of them are closed. So let's save and run. You can see it's running because this little red guy is lit up. We're going to say without and without. Let's do that again. I want to kind of get these out of the way here. Close our parent. Close and watch this red guy. Suddenly it knows, hey, we've exited code zero. So Qt knows how many dialogues you've opened, and it knows, hey, if there's still one open, leave the application open. Let's mix and match them. We'll say with parent and without parent. This top one has the parent. This bottom one does not. Let's go ahead and close this. And you notice how, oh, we have some undesirable behavior here. This guy stayed open. Pretty interesting how that works. So be very careful when doing that. Now, the other thing I want to point out here is if you were to just make a dialog, and I see this constantly, and you make it on the stack, not as a pointer, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, this goes back into our conversation about scope. What's going to happen is we're going to click this button. It's going to say, make a dialog, show it, and then instantly drop out of it. Save and run. Notice you can click this all day long. There's no dialog. Actually, to be brutally honest, every time you click this button, you see I'm clicking away. We're creating another dialog in the background, but it's instantly going out of scope. And then C++ is deleting it because we're doing this on the stack. That's why it's got to be a pointer. Let's fix this. Boy, I screwed that up. There we go. Now that it's a pointer, it'll work as expected. So if you're ever working with a dialog or a widget and you want to show it and nothing seems to happen, make sure you're using a pointer. Otherwise, as soon as this goes out of scope, it's going to do automatic memory management and clean it up and destroy the object for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger project out of Udemy called Cute Widgets for Beginners with C++. This is a large course with 73 lectures and 17 hours of video footage. This course covers everything from what is a widget all the way down to complete example applications using the skills you've learned in this course. Sorry, there's no QML in this course. This is strictly cute widgets. I will make a QML course later on, but this just focuses on widgets from a beginner's perspective. 
even though this is a beginner's course, you do need to have some fundamental information available. You need to know C++ and the Qt Core Libs. I do have some courses available out on Udemy, Qt Core Beginners, Intermediate Advanced. It's not necessary you take these courses, but it is highly recommended. And as always, I'm available out on the Voidrooms Facebook group, along with 3,000 other programmers. See you there.